moving on to our next wine. We're gonna go on to the reds, correct? Yes, the Adobe Red. It's Adobe Red 2009. So this one, as you notice, is also under the screw cap. Do you want to speak a little to why well, screw caps? Yeah, for us, um, for the Adobe series and, and our vineyard series, these wines are really um, designed to be fresh and fruity and um, consumed young. They're really not um, built to be aged, that you have to store them in your cellar for 10 years. And um, we, we really design them to be consumed the, the day you buy them or within a week or two. So um, the screw cap really helps to preserve the freshness mm. um, of the wine. And um, I think they're great if, if your wines are lighter, um, if you really need to age your wines for a long time, um, the cork is a, is a good way to go. And you'll see um, for our... Uh, estate series we use corks okay fantastic so essentially the wine that you put into bottle is the same way the consumer will perceive it when they open it exactly. so you have to even have a screw cap fantastic and restaurants love it and restaurants love it. <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> makes it easier for the servers <laughs> great so do you want to talk a little bit about your adobe red yeah so the adobe red is is um really one of the most difficult wines for for me to make because there are so many moving parts Oh. Um, in this wine, we have Zinfandel, uh, Petit Syrah, Malbec, Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, Petit Bordeaux, and a little bit of uh, Tempranillo at times. Oh my, um, that is a lot. So basically when I'm building this wine, each time you change something, a small per percentage, it kind of affects all the other varieties. Mm -hmm. um, so it takes a long time to really hone in on, on where we want to be with this wine. Um, but I think each variety adds, the Zinfandel adds this nice raspberry notes, um, the Petit Syrah gives us that dark blueberry and uh, black pepper and mid-palate. The Cabernet brings some nice fresh cherry fruit and a little bit more of that backbone. Mm -hmm. The Malbec is, uh, comes with a little anise, uh, like a sweet licorice uh, note mm -hmm. and a little earthiness. Um, and then the Petit Verdot adds great color and a really strong backbone and length to the wine. So it's all about kind of playing with all those pieces until um, none of them stand out. And it just makes a, a very smooth, uh, easy drinking, uh, delicious wine that goes with a lot of different foods. Right. And even as smooth it is, I'm um, very excited to taste that there's still a lot of excitement in the mouth going on. You still have a bit of structure. It's not flat and... Yeah, and there's um, some complexity too. I think with with all the all the different varieties, mm. and you get some of the barrel notes in there also. Yeah, that's wonderful. Okay, now paired with this, chef has a focaccia, tomato and cheese flatbread focaccia, correct? Uh huh. Yeah, we uh, all we heard when, when Ricky and I went tasting uh, down at Playhouse, uh, it was nice to be able to walk right on down because we're so close to each other. Uh, was when we were tasting it was tomato 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 so I was like, oh, let's just do a flatbread focaccia um we've got our local herb garden so um right on property so fresh basil tomato uh we went down to the pont cheese that we partner with a lot who is in that whole courtyard area we've talked about and uh got some great parmesan uh to put on this uh and uh I hope everyone enjoys them. Great. Well, let's try this. Yeah, it looks great. And what perfect use of the local products that we have here. We're very lucky being in California to have all these local things. Fresh produce year-round. Mmm, that's wonderful. Nice and fresh. Yeah, the herb, what do you say? That was basil on top? That just adds an element of freshness. That's wonderful. Yeah, thank you. And, uh... You know, up in the bar, Ricky, we grow uh, lavender on the property as well. So she does lavender and some of the cocktails. And uh, we probably have about 12 different herbs growing on the property right now. So it's kind of kind of chef's delight just to, you know, oh, well, let's go pick that today. Well, oh, well that's blooming. Uh, you know, the radishes are in. All right, here we go. So <laughs> it's, uh, you know, I got my own little winery, little vineyard, but it's food and <laughs> it's got grapes. So right. it's, it's a lot of fun. Fantastic. Now, talking about the lavender, Ricky, I have to ask, what type of drinks do you use the lavender in? We do a lavender lemon drop. That's one oh, of our that's signature fabulous. drinks. We try to use as much um, fresh product as much as possible. We also, our mojitos, 
we run right down the stairs and pick mint fresh off of the vine. So um, it's one of our signature drinks. We actually did for Lavender Festival, but ended up working out well and guests liked it a lot. So we ended up carrying it as one of our signature drinks. Great. Yeah, I can see why. Wow. Yeah. Wonderful. I can't wait to come over and try some. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to come up. <laughs> Definitely. Now, David, I just want to ask you about these three wines that we've just tasted. Now, with the blends, especially the Dobie Red and the Dobie White, how do you, how is this marketed in such a way that the people can understand? Or is it difficult to explain to people all the different varieties that go into these blends? It's not as hard as you think because we spend, you know, uh, Blake is talking about how much work it is to put them together. It's actually, we spend more time talking about these wines in terms of both making them and and promoting them and selling them than anything mm -hmm. else. And consequently, we know them very well. We know very well what kinds of foods they go with and, and, and right. what kinds of people might enjoy them and when they might enjoy them. And the blended uh, wine category has grown really very quickly in this country. So a few years ago, you know, our Adobe Red would be one of few blended reds going into some other red category in a retail store or on a wine list. But nowadays, there's so many blends, and particularly from Paso, which Blake was referencing, that this is sort of the place for blends here, uh, and it's, it's a growing reputation for it, that these wines stand out as wines of the region, and people kind of get that around the country. So Adobe Red, although you'd think, oh, it's just their blend, it's actually the biggest volume wine we sell all over the country. And if a distributor or a wholesaler or a retailer only has one of our wines, it's that one. So that's that's the one they pick first, because it is the one that they think represents this area that tells a vineyard story for us because mm -hmm. of the different blocks that go into it. Mm -hmm. And the blending story is really quite compelling as you hear both chef and, and winemakers speaking to the opportunity to combine ingredients is very exciting. Right, and I can see why it's an excellent wine. So um, a lot of these wines can be found at the restaurant, correct? The Paso Robles Inn mm -hmm. Steakhouse, yeah. We recently started carrying um, the Adobe Pink, which we're not featuring tonight, but um, I think we all fell in love with it after it was uh, one of Sunset's winners from Savor the Central Coast. So we actively sought out um, to start carrying that and we've gotten great reviews from it, from guests, um, which is nice because they can walk right down the street and taste as well. Right, and purchase it right there at the tasting room in downtown. Mm -hmm.